Okay. So, uh, how is the PhD? Like, for example, are you like a student or are you an employee like we have in Netherlands or most European countries? Like, you, it's like a job. PhD is like a job instead of you being a student and you get a monthly salary. So, how is it in Switzerland? Is it same? It's the or? same. It's the same. You get okay. the monthly salary. You pay taxes, of course. You have pension benefits. And um, do you own... remember, like, roughly what was the range of the monthly salary on hand after tax? Oh, I. Now it must be now. Now it it must has it must be increased now. But my last salary, because what it's also something that I I don't think happens in any other country. Your you get increments every year. At, at EPFL, uh, it's not much, but uh, you know, any anything is better than nothing, right? So yeah, yeah. Um, you get a little bit more every year. I think it's it's you get two thousand francs increment every year. I don't know if it, it happens still, uh, or it's now fixed. But I um, I used to get around somewhere in the vicinity of three thousand euros. Uh, okay, so that was like nine years back, nine six years back, or like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, six years back, yeah. I, I, yeah. As a, Switzerland is one of the highest paying countries in the world. So, mm -hmm. and and EPFL is uh, EPFL is not the highest paying university in Switzerland, but um, it is it is nice. Like it, we used to get around three thousand euros a month. So I mean, just to give an idea, because uh, maybe the salary might have changed a lot now, considering it was long time back. So. If you take into account like cost to savings uh, ratio for an individual, then what can be a very rough, uh, like what percentage of your income can you expect to save? Uh, maybe like a very rough estimate. So I, I guess maybe that percentage still translates today, even though the, grow, the, the net salary might have changed and the expenses might have changed, but. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the worst person to answer that question because I never believed in savings. So, and, and you won't believe me that I did not save. Um, uh, but, but I know people have saved uh, at EPFL uh, while working at EPFL. I think you can easily save around. Um, oh wow! <laughs> I think a quarter you could you could have I could have saved a quarter of my salary okay. if I wanted to. Yeah. Okay. So but I never, I, mean, I never it, believed in saving. So I, nobody will believe me when I say this. I like, I came out of Switzerland empty hand. Okay. <laughs> Almost. So, uh, I mean, I know that people say the cost of living is high in most Swiss countries. Like, uh, sorry, I mean most cities in Switzerland. But uh, that's why I asked the question, like just to be sure, like, okay, oh. so you can still oh, say. No, yeah, yeah, you get possibly. paid. Yes, yes, you get paid accordingly. Like, uh, okay. uh, and it, this is what I'm saying that uh, it also varies. Like Zurich is one of Zurich. So when the all the six years I lived in Switzerland, um, Zurich was the most expensive city in the world. And Lausanne, where I lived, was the second most expensive city in the world. Like it, it was more expensive to live in Lausanne than to live in New York and San Francisco. Okay, but uh, you get paid that way, so so uh, it's it's not a, it shouldn't be a worry to like it, okay. salary shouldn't be a concern uh, if you want to go to Switzerland for PhD. Okay, uh, so how is the PhD atmosphere in Switzerland, like opportunities to maybe network, grow as a researcher, attend different conferences, summer schools. So how is it? So uh, summer schools are very good. Uh, actually, there are winter schools as well because uh, Swiss, Swiss people are very big on skiing. So they do these uh, skiing schools because uh, so they take you in the mountains. They uh, teach you four hours in the morning then you are free for five hours and then they teach you five, four hours in the evening. So uh, like like the, the winter schools that I went to were, were something like that. So you can also, you know, go skiing around with professors and, um, and, and you know, senior researchers and, and they will not only teach you subject matter, but they will also teach you skiing if you are <laughs> nice enough to them or they, if they find you nice. 
So, um, uh, so the summer schools and winter school situation is very good in, in Switzerland. You can also, of course, go abroad based on, you know, um, like in our community, this JTEL thingy happens. Uh, so, so you can go there. Um, the costs are paid by school, of course. Uh, you can go to conferences if you have a paper. Um, but it depends on, so uh, it depends on lab to lab then. Uh, like how many conferences can you go in a year can be either so the, the least is two for sure like one intercontinental and one European trip is paid uh, but depending on how much money each professor has uh, divided by how many PhDs he has currently uh, it can vary but the, the mid basic the, the minimum that you get is one intercontinental trip and one European trip um, I have seen uh, labs where you can get up to three or four European trips because EasyJet and um, um, and and one one to two like nobody sends any way out for more than two intercontinental trips because uh, it's uh, the, the the management of funds is something we shouldn't go in that in that detail but it's something that a professor does on his own in at EPFL so it, it's a bit uh, tricky but yeah you get at least one intercontinental and one European trip at least okay so now going into the topic of your PhD so can you like uh, tell us briefly like what was the topic of your PhD so I did my PhD in eye tracking uh, applications uh, so we were uh, looking at how people see at different things um, on the monitor or you know we were also putting them uh, eye tracking glasses on their heads uh, to see uh, when two people, two or more people come together and collaboratively solve a problem uh, like a program understanding or or there was a big trend uh, on tangible user interfaces uh, to train vocational education, which is also very big in, in Switzerland. Um, also robotics. Uh, so I did uh, multiple experiments where I gave people problems to solve, uh, mostly educational problems. That's why I'm in the technology enhanced learning side. Um, and looked at if there is a difference between experts and novices, um, expert and novice students, um, and also um, good and poor students. Uh, so who learned better and who did not, unfortunately, could learn in the given time. And I always wanted to see how I can um, learn from uh, experts and teach novices. So that's the whole idea of my eye tracking research too say uh, there is because there is this uh, theory that experts have a different way of looking at things um, than novices and if you can teach um, so my motivation was to if i can teach that way of looking at at, uh, at, at you know for example a program um, a simple way a very simple finding from one of my studies was that experts look at data flow and uh, novices look um, novices read like english text so the idea of my PhD was to see, okay, tell novices to look at the data flow. Maybe they will be uh, better in understanding the program. So yeah, that was the main idea, to learn from experts, give feedback to novices. Okay, yeah, that's very interesting to know. I hope many other people might be interested. So if you want to contact Shitesh, I'll leave his contact details in the, in the description below of the video. So also you can have a look at his google scholar profile or any research publications that he has made in the past so moving on to the next question what did you like and dislike the most uh, about doing a phd in switzerland well uh, dislike not many things to be honest um little bit of bureaucracy when it comes to but I think that's the problem in whole Europe, right? Like, like uh, the bureaucratic channels can be frustrating at times. Uh, but apart from that, no, people are nice. Um, the, the work environment was very good in the lab I was working. It was um, very international. We were, when I joined, I think we were 28 employees, like including um, some technical and pedagogical staff and PhD students. Um, we were 28 people from 19 or 21 nationality guys and uh, i don't remember exact number but yeah it was like there were only two swiss people in in the whole uh, lab so it's like it's very international and epfl itself is very international they they are proud this is something they are very proud of 
and um, ETH is the same. It, they, they are very international, um, both um, EPF, EPFL and ETH. And also now the cantonal universities are also becoming more and more international day by day. Um, what I liked the most was that that you have you know you have the international experience. You get the exposure from other cultures um, apart from your work. You know your social life is also uh, it becomes more international. Um, you make new friends, uh, more or less in every festival that I went. So that was nice. Okay, so it seems you like you really enjoyed your time during your PhD in Switzerland. Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, uh, so going to the final question, uh, what were uh, so do did you have any specific challenges and what lessons did you learn? during those challenges or maybe any advice that you want to give to people who want to apply for PhD in Switzerland in future based on your experiences like uh, or these challenges that you faced? Also the biggest challenge is uh, um, biggest challenge at EPFL per se is is basically to remain uh, kind of you know like like people say you have to remain relevant in your research all the time because uh, it's um, it's it's the culture of the university that for example when MOOCs came to Europe uh, these these massive online open courses when they came to Europe EPFL was the first university to jump on so uh, that was the biggest challenge and and my PhD was affected by that so because I moved from programming to MOOCs then and um, it was one of the like the you know quick u-turns uh, that, that PhDs shouldn't take in my opinion but um, the, the idea is to yeah like uh, you have to uh, you know like they say ride the wave all the time uh, which is uh, not very easy for for most people it was not easy for me either like i'm not saying that i did it very well i, I might have made mistakes but uh, the thing is that you you always have to keep on top of the things um if you're at epfl so that's the biggest challenge i faced uh, like to keep you know um ahead of um of, of at least rest of the europe so uh but um th that's the advice like you know like um if, if you want to go and do these kind of research but i, I was very happy because you know sometimes uh, during one of my P like one of the semesters of my phd if you searched something i don't even remember but somebody told me that all the 10 pages were mine like the first google search about something it went to me all the first 10 pages. So that was very, I, I felt proud about that. Uh, um, but that's also the risk, right? Like if you are the only one doing those things, nobody will cite you. So, you know, uh, it, it has it has both pros and cons there. Um, yeah, um, the advice is basically don't take TOEFL or ILITS very uh, easy if you want to go to EPFL because the cutoff is very high. Uh, so those people who are still were who still want to go to EPFL or even ETH, I think ETH has also 105 or more uh, cutoff. ETH, if I remember, I think now they are also asking for GRE, if I remember. Ah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. This I was not aware of. See, that's why. Um, I don't think EPFL still asks for GRE. No, I, I don't know about EPFL. Friends. I only know about ETH. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they are they are in competition from each other. So they, if if EPFL does something uh, first, EP, ETH will do it in two years or one year. And if ETH does something first, EPFL will so probably EPFL will also change soon. Yeah. So uh, just a small follow up question based on what you mentioned. Like uh, you said, like you also have a semester just like we have in masters or bachelors when you study in Europe. So in PhD also, even though you're paid, you have a semester based system and you need to take certain courses or what do oh, you yeah. do in that? Like, yes, like uh, I mean, to take maybe just CPS. highlight the brief uh, additional responsibilities, like maybe the courses or some teaching work or something like that. Yeah, so you have to take 30 CTS if you are not a PFL student. Uh, if you have done your master's from anywhere outside, actually Switzerland. I think Swiss students were exempted from that. No, actually ETH students were exempted from that. So if you're not at, at EPFL or ETH, you have to do 30 CTS. And 
uh, for uh, PhDs, there is one uh, course. So there, there are a list of courses. And among those list of courses, one of them you have to pass with five out of six. So the grading in Switzerland is from one to six and uh, below four is fail. Um, so that's very strict uh, as compared to other, other countries. Um, and you have to pass with five out of six. If you are if you are getting below five, you are failing that course as a PhD student. But it's only for one course, so that's uh, that's that's kind of okay. But the first few semesters can be a little bit rough on that front because you have to do TA. Um, no, actually not the first semester. So th that's the good thing. The first and last semester is free of teaching, although you are paid for teaching because uh, some part of your contract is teaching. Uh, but they say that first semester you don't have to do TA and the last semester when you're writing your PhD you don't have to do TA. Uh, but anywhere between 2 and N-1 you have to always do TA and it is not advisable that you start uh, all your courses like don't do all 30 ECTS in one semester. It's uh, because you have liberty of doing it in four years so why do it in <laughs> in, in one semester yeah. or about two years. But uh, I think I finished it in three semesters, my 30 ECTS. Um, but yeah, the, the second and third semester could be a bit, little bit rough because you have to do TA, you have to do your research. And in the bit, in middle, uh, I think end of second semester, you have to also defend your uh, proposal. Okay. So yeah, it, the first two, three semesters can be rough because first semester, I'm sure it will be rough because you are coming from, uh, you're coming to a new country if you're not Swiss already. so. Uh, you know, the, all the cultural shocks that you get or uh, things like that. Okay, thank you very much for giving your time uh, for this interview. And in the next in next video, we are going to discuss about what Shitish is doing currently. That is his postdoc research in NTNU Norway. So stay tuned for the next video and don't forget to smash the like button if you have not smashed it and share the video with all your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the upcoming video. Till then, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.